Okay, welcome to Medical Moms of NICU. I have the pleasure of introducing a friend of mine, beloved friend. I've known her for almost going on five years, five years, Takesha yeah. Ford. She is a registered nurse and she has almost a decade, well, going on 11 years of uh, medical experience and she currently works at the skilled unit in Louisiana. But I have her on here because she has seen it all. And I'm going to allow her to introduce herself even more about her medical experience in the NICU unit, um, as well as personal experience that she's had with her son, Yamein, who is now in college. And <laughs> she has another, another child that's in high school. So she's almost an empty nester. So <laughs> congratulations. That's young, that's young Yamein. And so she's showing yes. up with my son. And I think you can see it. But uh, thank you so much, sis, for joining us on this on this Zoom interview. Welcome. And you can go ahead and introduce yourself in more detail if you like. Okay. Well, like she said, I'm Takesha Ford. I love nursing. Um, I have worked as far as in the, in the NICU unit. Um, it kind of tugs at your heart from what the things that you see. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't continue to stay there, especially when my kids were smaller um, at that point in time, because it, it weighs on you. It does, it weighs on you. You see a lot of different um, individual kids that are critical. You deal with um, the parents that are going through a lot of different um, situations, mentally and physical. Um, I must say for us, one of my experience that really was well, it's, it's a couple that really stick out one is you know learning how to take care of a baby when they are born so early that the skin is transparent and your fingertips when you touch them feels like sandpaper so you can rip the skin off um we have to wear special gloves when they're that small because you're you can't imagine like your fingertips being like sandpaper to someone else's skin. Right. Um, but in that situation, sadly, um, some of them do live, mm -hmm. but that that individual did not. Um, I have seen it to the point where organs on the opposite side and and parents trying to go through different things, different situations, surgeries. Mm -hmm. um, the baby's going through a lot mm -hmm. and still the quality of life when the doctor come in and speak with them, sometimes the quality of life won't be there. You know, there'll be um, a vegetable, you know, if we continue on this route or trying to um, save them oxygen depleted, things along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, ooh. Tanisha, it's, it's, it's something. Right. It's, right. it's something. Have you ever experienced, Takesha, like some good testimonies? Because I know like when we talk about NICU, which is Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, it can be kind of daunting to talk about. But have you seen any, any stories where in a situation where you saw certain babies come through? that journey successfully it took some time but did you see any type of um good experiences while you were there when yes when they were born maybe a couple of months early i have um you see great outcomes mm -hmm. um sadly if they're born three to four months early, the, it, it really gets um, slim. Mm -hmm. And if they do make it, because a few have, but they're pretty much um, in a wheelchair or bound or a geriatric chair, you know, kind of reclining for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I mean, especially with how technology and medicine has came along so far, mm -hmm. even now, you know, far as I think one of the, best things that I have ever seen is when a mother is able to touch their baby. Right. You know? right. 
Right. Being in the, in the Nikki, you know, at, I was told before I even got there, you know, that wasn't even possible. <laughs> they kept every, everyone separate, but, you know, because of the germs and, and the high risk, and they didn't have the means of what they have now, even as far as having the baby, as far as being in the evening, you know, being able to help sustain life and kind of mimic the the wound to a certain extent the comfort level so it's amazing technology is amazing so yes we have seen some positive things um especially through that and obviously you know our faith my faith is in christ so and he knows all and can do all and when faith is there yeah it has been right right and i i love how you said you know, tech, technology has advanced because, as you know, with our son, Jaleel, he's been through a lot, you know. And so mm-hmm. I, I remember the time when, you know, he had a lot of breathing treatment. You know, he was on the oscillator and then went to the ventilator and then got on the little oxygen mask and then he eventually got to room <laughs> air. But it took a while because he was on so much equipment that I don't even yeah. remember holding him, physically holding him until like a week after he was born. So I'm just exactly. grateful that, you know, it's come to a place where moms can do kangaroo care. They can also do pumping if they, they're not able to breastfeed. Um, so they mm-hmm. make it where you're able to still be that mother in the medical unit. Yes. And that's, and that's a good thing. Now, I do, I do want to give the audience a little bit of your story, even though it wasn't NICU Pacific, but you did have a scare um, with your oldest son, Yamin. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yes, well, little Yamin, um, at that point in time, we were stationed in Japan. He was one. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I felt the bed moving, he was having a seizure. Um, jumped up really quick and obviously couldn't stop him from seizing and ran to my neighbor. Um, it got to the point where he was having static seizures where they would kind of constantly come. And they named him as idiopathic, um, not known why um, he was having them. But they would last a little bit under 10 minutes. Mm. Um, we were met back to Hawaii and he, from spinal taps to being so drugged up that, you know, he saw tar- tarantulas, different spiders, or he wasn't really mentally there and very lethargic. Um, it, was, it was a challenge. After being in Hawaii for a couple of weeks, they kind of died down, stopped having them. Um, they sent us back to Hawaii, and less than a week, they restarted back up. So, uh, no, within that day, the following day, they restarted. So they sent us back to Hawaii, and at that point in time, we had orders to go to Virginia, where it was a, um, a better, bigger medical facility. He, God is good. I mean, he wound up being on Topamax um, for a little while and he couldn't sweat. So if it was 110 degrees outside, his body temperature would get to that point. So we had to make sure we monitor him and give him ice pops to keep the inter, um temperature at a cool point because his body wasn't couldn't sweat on that medication. Um, it got... All that took probably a total of five months or so. Um, obviously been on the medicine for a year and a half, but of course the hospital stays and back and forth was probably about five months or so. But you realize even in those situations that there are blessings. Uh, speaking, being able to interact and speak with other parents that are going through things that might not be on that your level, could be even, you know, intense, a little bit more, but yet still mm-hmm. the things that you get from them 
parents and that you are able to give to each other the comfort and being able to pray and and realize that you know what this is where I'm at right now and trying to take the blessing out of the situation right uh, right so your thoughts like, but now I know you went through a roller coaster ride of emotions obviously do you oh yeah any 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 experiences where like because you were in the hospital or your son was in the hospital for a long period of time, how was the communication? Cause I know like even now the, they have this special program and you might be familiar with, it's called child life, which it documents like infants that are in the NICU. They take pictures and they do little arts and crafts to kind of, kind of keep track of their medical milestones. Did they have anything like, because you were going through a lot of emotions, did they have any support groups available for you as a, as a mom, as a parent? Um, how did they deliver information? Not at that point in time. And especially that it wasn't my physician or his physician per se, because we were being met at that back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, I wound up being blessed to come across some nurses that actually helped take care of me at that point in time because the husband had to go back to Japan. Okay. Um, they were very supportive because I wound up being hospitalized myself. I got to the point where I wasn't sleeping when eating and I was pregnant with Makana, my baby, the youngest one at that point in time. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what they offered their friends at the Children's Hospital on that floor was having the nurses come. They would put um, little Yamane in a little car and take him to the little um, center where he can kind of play with some toys because at that point in time, they had an IV in his foot and <laughs> thinking about putting one in his head. So, <laughs> so it was a lot, a lot going on. And I guess to keep his mind from it, and it really didn't take my mind off of it too much. Um, my comfort level came from just being able to speak with other parents, going to the um, the kids center where the kids would play at, you know. But I think it was the main the main um, issue or the main purpose were to try to get the kids to feel still like they were kids. But it wasn't like it is now, you know, as far as with the pictures, the different milestones and documentations. I mean, if you didn't take the pictures, you really didn't have any um, pictures. And at that point in time, I wasn't taking anything. I was barely right. sustained and just trying to focus on him. So when he was in the hospital at that point in time, it wasn't as far as, as detailed and documented as things are now. Right. But with that came technology, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have like the, the, the beads of courage. I know you're familiar with that, where they give a bead for each medical milestone for the child, and they have little programs at yes. children's hospitals now, where it's it's kind of like a a, a memory, you know, of, of a series of memories that you can put up on their walls and stuff like that. So it's come a long way, but I'm glad that you had some strong parents around you that were going through almost similar situations or even worse you had situations and y'all had each other in that moment did you did did you have any care conferences like i know with our son we had a lot of care conferences about jaleel's care and what the plan of action would be did they come together like as a as a uh care team for yamane and kind of give you what updates like regularly or did you have to kind of prompt? Not regularly. Not regularly. It happened twice. Um, that's when we got with the neurologist and um, also far as the doctor far as in the hospital um, mm -hmm. that was dealing with the, the spine at that point in time too. Mm -hmm. um, no, not as detailed because they, their thing was they were trying to figure it out mm -hmm. and they kept saying, you know, it's idiopathical. You know, maybe he'll grow out of it. If he doesn't stop having them by the age, we were told if he doesn't stop having them by the age five, mm -hmm. or if it continue on, even on this medication, that, you know, most likely he'll have this disorder for the rest of his life. He won't be able to drive. Um, wow. 
you know, as far as get a driver's license because, you know, we have a seizure disorder. And, but now even with seizure disorders, you know, some kids with different medications are still able now to function. So at that point in time when your man was going through it, and I don't know, they gave you, a, it was kind of slim. So I was just praying that, you know what, this is just a short term situation right. and that he gets through it and we don't have to worry about the long term. Mm-hmm. But, you know, after being on the medicine, like I said, for about a year and a half or so, um, even while on the medication for that year or so, he did not have any breakthrough um, seizures at that point in time. Awesome. That's awesome. They just stopped. So he, he was eventually able to get weaned off the medication that they they had gave y'all. Yes. Yeah. Discharge. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, talk about mm-hmm. your main today. What is he up to? After all this complex, Woo. <laughs> I, old is he see, I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could show you an older picture, but the older picture is on the phone. Okay, so, <laughs> it's okay. Because <laughs> he sent it to me. All the other stuff is just don't have it yet. Stuff is in storage. But far as Lydia May now is eighteen. Um a lacrosse player, a collegiate lacrosse player. Um, he's attending SCAD University. He was able to drive. He don't have the car now, but he has a game today. You know, um, he loves what he's doing. He's majoring in industrial design. And to him, without the pictures, he don't even really recall um, the situation that he went through. Um, but it's a blessing to be able to sit with him and he knows um, that he has a purpose. You know, right. you're here for a reason. We all here for a reason, but you, you, you have a story to tell, you, you know, that God is amazing and mm-hmm. you are where you at because of him. So I tell him to use his gifts that he was given, you know, yeah. use your gifts. There you go. Well, I am so glad and proud of y'all main and, I'm thankful for you, and thank you for sharing your story, your medical experience with us. I, I appreciate your time, and I'm looking forward to hearing more good things from you soon, Takesha Ford. Thank you for your time. <laughs>